Now, a natural thing people want to do in math is to take a sequence and add up all the terms, which we call a summation. And we're going to talk in this lesson about the notation used, which is called summation notation or sigma notation. So here's sigma, or my horrible version of sigma. And what this notation means is that I'm going to add up the first n terms of a sequence so this is supposed to be the Greek letter sigma, and I have a little index, and it equals a 1, and then up here I have another thing that's an n, and then I have an a sub i, and what this is supposed to represent is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus blah 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 up to a sub n. Now this little i, which can be any le letter you want, usually an i or a j or a k, it stands for the index of summation. So this is the thing that's going to change from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever. n is the upper limit. So this is the highest number you're going to go to. So if this were a 5, that means you'd only go from 1 to 5. If this were a 1 and that were a 7, that means you go up to 1 to 7. If this is an infinity, then you go from 1 to infinity. All right. Now 1, in this case, is the lower limit. That's what you start with. So you start with the 1. And you don't have to start with the 1. Sometimes you'll see it start with a 0. Sometimes you'll see it start with like a 3 or a 4 or 12 or whatever. And then a sub i is called the summand. And what this is, it's the rule to generate these terms of the sequence that are getting added together. So in the three previous videos on sequences, we, we had to actually write general terms or I gave you one. Um, and that's what goes here. We're going to use this one to look at what this means. So 3i is my summand. This is the rule to generate the terms. Then I tell you what I want i to start with, which is 1. That's my start with i value. And this is the value I want to end with. So what, what this notation means is I'm going to do 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3, plus 3 times 4, plus 3 times 5. And all it is is the shortcut way to write these terms of a sequence added together. Now, if your summand requires you to have an addition or a subtraction, what you have to remember to do is you have to remember to put it in parentheses like this so that you know each term of the sequence is 1 plus the k squared. And so in this case, we look very carefully and we see that it starts with 3. So then I have the first term is 1 plus 3 squared, and the second term is 1 plus 4 squared. The next term is 1 plus 5 squared, and the last term is 1 plus 6 squared, and that's what this one means. And now, of course, we can use things like factorial, whatever I want in my summand. And in this case, I don't have it in parentheses because it's a quotient. You have to be careful with the addition or subtractions. With the divisions, you don't really have to worry about it. If you want to, you can put it in parentheses, but that's not required. Oftentimes, you won't see the divisions, the quotients written with the parentheses. And just, I chose this example just to give you a reminder um, that if you do start off at zero, in this case, zero factorial does exist. Remember, zero factorial is defined as one. And if I expand this out, I get that. So like every other operation or every other symbol, there are properties that always hold. We're going to say that C is some constant. Now the properties you're going to see here are actually really easy to prove. You can kind of expand things out and prove them. And I'm going to have you do that in class. I don't need to show you an example to make you do that later. All right. So in this case, um, if I want to find the sum of some constants, and what this really is is just C plus C plus C plus C. It's Nothing's really changing. And that can easily be defined as c times n. Another property is if I have some constant times my summand, then I can just factor that constant out. The next property is if I have 
two summons added together, I can just split those two up. And I can do the same thing with subtraction. So these sums of terms of a sequence are pretty popular and have been around for a while. And they have a special name, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. But a lot of people have been looking at these and trying to find formulas to find the sum so you don't actually have to add them all up. And here are some useful sum formulas. Now, on a test, I don't expect you to memorize these. Most people remember this first one because it shows up in things like math cancel all the time. But the other ones are a little more exotic. You don't have to memorize them. I'll give them to you on a test. But for the purposes of your activity, or homework or studying or whatever, I'd write them down just to just so you have them. Now, we're talking about powers of integers that are being added together. So this first formula is for the sum of the first n integers. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus blah, 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 blah. And this formula is n times n plus 1 divided by 2, made famous by Gauss when he was a little kid. Um, this next one is the sum of the squares, so 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared, and this n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 is the sum of the squares. Now the sum of the cubes is n squared times n plus 1 quantity squared all over 4, and then these last two are like the exotic ones that you rarely have to work with. Uh, the sum of the fourth powers is kind of long. That's why you can see why I don't have you memorize it. It's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 times 3n squared plus 3n minus 1 all over 30. And then the sum of the fifth powers is n squared, n plus 1 squared, 2n squared plus 2n minus 1 all over 12. And people figured these out, and we'll talk about how to prove them later. In the meantime, I want to show you how to use these and the other properties of sums to figure out what this is. Now I'm using small numbers so it's pretty easy just to figure out the terms and add them together. But you can use the sum formulas and the properties to expand this out and uh, I'm going to show you how. So first off, there's a subtraction. So by that property, that last property, I can write it as two separate summations being subtracted. And then I have that other property that says, well, hey, if I have a constant times my sum end, I can just take it out. And so this is the same thing as 6 times that minus 4 times that. And what this is is the sum of the integers, and this is the sum of the integer squared, which I have formulas for. And so I can turn sigma notation into a formula. And since n in this case is 4, I can go ahead and plug in my formula, 4 times 4 plus 1 over 2 minus 4 times then the formula for the square, which is 4 times 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 6. Now, I don't know if that's any harder or easier than just figuring out the terms and adding them together, but if I made this, you know, 200 or something, then using the formulas is a lot easier. 